This video provides an example of how to conduct a functional hazard analysis in a system modeling tool using SysML. So the raw material for this is a published NASA report on preliminary considerations for classifying hazards of unmanned aircraft systems. And so what I've done is I've taken this and boiled it down uh, into some Excel content for import. Uh, in particular, I've taken the functional decomposition uh, that was conducted uh, and gone ahead and populated some Excel files with this. Uh, I've also gone ahead and extracted out uh, this functional hazard assessment uh, for import as well. So I'll be able to pull this in and show you how rapidly uh, a meaningful analysis can be conducted in a system modeling tool. So here's an example of the uh, hazard analysis in particular uh, with the uh, records all placed here with the uh, consequences, remarks, and hazard classifications. And this is the raw material for the imports. So I've basically broken down the functions uh, with what uh, functional block is going to own them. I also was able to determine uh, an initial set of signals that we'll use to track information flowing around, as well as some glossary terms. So all of these have been placed into uh, Excel and set up as CSVs for import into Magic Draw. So with that, we'll go ahead and go to the importer. And we'll import from a CSV. And in this case, we'll go with the hazard analysis import. And we'll start by pulling in these signals. And so these signals are uh, messages that we will use uh, to pull information and show how it flows around activity diagrams. So I've now set that up. I'm setting that up as a key property as well to make sure we don't import any duplicates and we will go ahead and run that and our signal library has come in with our 21 signals that were identified. Our next step is to import the um, functional blocks and so we will import those uh, quickly here and we're going to apply the functional stereotype to those as well that I've previously created and so we will go ahead and do that and put those in the functional blocks package here and so that is going to be this column and so that is the name of those. We'll also make that the key property so we don't import any duplicates. And it's now imported 19 functional blocks. So we now have a set of functional blocks imported. We're now going to import the individual functions, which have been set up for import as well. So those go in here. And those are going to be operations. And we'll explain later why we use those but those are the operations. So they're owned by the blocks we just imported. Their name will also be the key field and we'll go ahead and import those. And we now have 87 functions that have been pulled in and are nicely nested underneath um, these as well. And our final step here is going to be to import some glossary terms that I identified and we'll go ahead and import that as well. So we will import the glossary function. We'll put that into the glossary. And those are classes and terms. And so uh, the term is here. That's its name. And the definition is the owned comment and we hit finish and now that is complete and we now have a nice glossary of terms available as well so any place that these appear in the model they'll be underscored and demonstrate that so we'll close this off by making a glossary table and we'll add the existing terms from the glossary and now that's all set and we will also create a table of all of our functional um, blocks that we've imported. And this now gives us a list of all of the functional blocks as well as the um, functions that they own. We'll also do a list of operations as well.
Now I tend to prefer documenting things and I haven't bothered to do that in this case, but um, you know, this is a case where I would strongly advocate putting definitions in for what all these functions mean. But again, here's a case where in a matter of minutes we've imported all of the functional information, the terms of, of uh, that are well-defined as well as the messages.